Matthew chapter 18. Circumstances this past week just confirmed in my heart that this is the study we ought to do this morning. And that is the study on forgiving. Not being forgiven, we are. We're forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. He forgave us. Jesus forgave us all of our sin. That's total, complete. That's done the whole message. But I want to look at this morning how we ought to be forgiven. How do we do that? How do we live in the constant sweetness of forgiving? So Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 25, uh, tells us about Peter's request to Jesus about forgiveness. That was a very good request. Peter wanted to know why, because every one of us lives in circumstances where we need to learn how to forgive as they did. So do we. <clears throat> so the Bible said, and it's a, it's a lengthy reading, uh, Matthew 18, 21 to 35. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? till seven times. Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servant. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had uh, not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. The servant there fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. By the way, that's one of the ingredients that we need to have if we are going to forgive, don't get angry. Don't get resentful. You've got to keep a heart of compassion. Now that's easy to say, but absolutely very difficult to practice, especially when something goes wrong. So it's compassion. Don't lose that. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which told him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. That's how angry he was. Took him by the throat. Do you realize that unforgiveness will cause you to be more angry than you ever thought you could become. And his fellow servants fell down, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not see that stubbornness. Now he's angry, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. By the way, you can do whatever you want to someone, even casting them into prison. That does not make you satisfied. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that, he called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise, here's the application for you and I. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. That's total. Now, this message that we want to look at this morning, 
you might just store it for some other time because you don't need it now. Your heart's okay, nothing wrong. You're not upset with anybody. Any little problem, you've been able to deal with it or let it go. Uh, I'm preaching it because maybe there's someone that's either watching it now or going to watch it is in prison because of unforgiveness. Or you may store it and then somewhere down the road, it'll click in your heart. You know what? I'm walking in anger and I need to forgive and I will. So that's the purpose of the message this morning, a study on forgiveness. See, listen to this statement. <clears throat> you can be a Christian saved, obedient in baptism, even a church member, and yet be angry. You can be in bitterness. You can be a Christian in bitterness. You can be revengeful, even though you're a Christian. You can be filled with an awesome anger and yet be on your way to heaven. So don't don't get to thinking that, well, uh, whoever gets angry is not a Christian. Not true. Not true. I've seen many a Christian uh, be angry and unforgiving and do some awesome things uh, because uh, they've been hurt. So a person who is unforgiving <laughs> cannot have total peace, cannot have the contentment that we're supposed to have or live in the fullness of joy that Jesus said ought to be ours. Now I'm reminding you, Brother Mark, you want to put this on the screen, John 15 verses 9 to 11. If you want to turn there, that'd be a great verse to look at because Jesus wants the Christian, born again believers, children of God, to walk in the fullness of joy. Now, there's circumstances will come up in your life and mine that may for some point in time take the joy away, but that can only be, uh, that can be temporary if you practice it. For the Bible said in John 15, verse 9, as the Lord hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continually in, continue ye in my love. See, you cannot have love and hatred at the same time. The, the Bible said, I think it's in the book of James, uh, a fountain cannot spew forth sweet water or bitter water. So your heart will spew forth that which is harbored in it. So if you're to continue in love, verse 10, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. That means stay there. Even as I have kept my father's commandments, that's right. See, Jesus never got angry that in the cross of Calvary. He stayed commandment in the commandments of the Lord. And abide in his love. Verse 11, last one. These things have I spoken unto you, that's you and I, that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full full. I look at that little section of the scriptures and think of full. How much coffee do you want in your cup? I want a full cup. I, I noticed on the, uh, on the picture every once in a while, uh, especially in Noel, I, I didn't see anybody else, but I saw Noel. He's, uh, every once in a while holding a cup of coffee. Maybe most of you are, uh, but uh, what do you like? You want a full cup. You want full joy, real joy. Uh, there's a song like that. Uh, if you want joy, real joy, nothing but joy, let Jesus come into your heart. Real, real joy. Nobody wants to wake up every morning and feel as though the world just is down on your soul, depressed and discouraged and just difficult. You want to wake up and thank the Lord for a good night's rest and 
a wonderful day, no matter what your situation is. Maybe you're all alone in your apartment. Wake up and put on a good cup of coffee and thank the Lord and take your Bible and enjoy, sing a song and just enjoy the fullness of joy. So I want to give you three things today. What causes unforgiveness? Two, what are the consequences of unforgiveness? And three, let's get to this one and get there quickly. What's the cure? How do I forgive? Now, I'm not making light of any pain that you've ever experienced. Some of it's horrendous, absolutely horrendous. What's the cause? Well, there are too many to mention all of them, and they're varied. I'll give you some examples. You know, rejection is painful. When you have loved someone, you have given your life, you have given your, your all, and sometime in their life, they rejected you and you knew it. You talk about a deep pain. Everybody wants to be loved, but to be rejected, whether it's a parent, whether it's a husband, whether it's a wife, whether it's a son or a daughter, whether it's a girlfriend. I, I remember years ago, I dealt with a gentleman who remembered a girlfriend in grade school that he had kind of liked, rejected him, made him feel embarrassed. He never forgot it, nor did he get over it. Even after we spent some time, he could not let it go. It was in his mind and in his heart. Rejection, just one thought, how that can cause pain. <clears throat> Neglect by someone, something you expect and you didn't get it. Unfulfilled expectations. When Marilyn and I counsel uh, those that are going to be married, uh, we ask them sometimes, what do you expect from your soon to be married mate? What are your expectations? Because when you come in with huge expectations and you don't get them, for example, if I expected Marilyn to bake a lot of cakes, I would be very disappointed. But I didn't expect that because she told me right at the beginning, uh, I did a lot of baking, I've done a lot of baking, but I'm done with baking. And uh, I just said, well, praise the Lord. And so, uh, our grandchildren now do the baking for us, which are thankful. Did I get offended by it? Not a chance. Why? Because I didn't expect it. Husbands, be careful what you expect from your wife. And wives, be careful what you expect from your husband. So neglect because of unfulfilled expectations. Well, there's all kinds of other things. False accusations. When you've been accused of something that you did not do, it could get you angry, upset, abandonment, mistreatment. Here's another big one. I won't spend much time on it, but I'll use the word abuse. Abuse. If a wife's abused by her husband, I mean real abuse. Oh boy. Oh boy. Real abuse. Physical abuse. That's painful, painful. It could come from a parent, a husband. It even could come from a preacher. Maybe somebody here is watching today and somewhere down the line, some preacher offended you, hurt you, said something to you. It could be a sibling, it could be a teacher. It could be a close friend. Jesus had a friend, he called Judas a friend. And yet Judas turned him in, but he never got angry at Judas. Why? Because he lived under the commandment of God to love. So there's all kinds of reasons, the cause. 
Some are even mad at God. I recall a young lady uh, writing out uh, a note. I've got the note. Uh, it's from years gone by. She was mad at God. Why at God? For allowing something devastating in her life. I ask you this morning, is there anything in your life that you're mad at God? Did he allow something not to hurt you, but it's painful? Mad at God. So it's true. Somewhere, somehow, someone is going to offend you. And how you deal with it will determine how you feel. Secondly, not only the cause, but what are the consequences? What are they? <clears throat> you know, uh, getting offended at someone and wanting them to hurt is like you drinking poison, hoping that the other guy will die. It's all on you. Uh, the consequences are, <clears throat> it'll open the door for sickness in your body and in your life. Maybe stress, stressed out, depression, uh, a lack of sleep. Boy, you're haunted with uh, memories. <clears throat> Number two, it can cause a, a hindrance in your progression in your Christian life. You'll only grow so far. Why? Because that anger, that unforgiveness uh, uh, causes uh, the lack of further growth in your life. I mean, you're, you're, you, you can only grow so far. Your love has started out, but it's now grown cold. The Bible said, in the end times, the love of many shall wax cold. It'll wax cold. Number three, uh, you will have an unforgiveness. You will have an unhappy life. Maybe you're experiencing major or minor marriage problems. You're unhappy. <clears throat> have you ever dug deep? down into why a person in a marriage might be unhappy. Maybe something was said. Maybe it got an argument. Maybe everything you talk about, it becomes an argument. Brother Don dealt with a lot of marriage uh, problems. Uh, and so have I been involved with the number. And I'm just asking you know, from the depth of my heart, Analyze, are you having marriage problems? Sit down and talk to God and say, why am I having these marriage problems? And God will show you from the word of God and from the spirit of God that maybe there's something in you that you're carrying that God says, let it go and forgive and forgive one another. The key is to forgive one another another. <clears throat> you could experience in unforgiveness an outburst of anger. I've seen this happen with people. They've suddenly just exploded with anger. Or it could be same, the same thoughts of that person that offended you. It goes over in your mind over and over and over and over. And every time you go over it, what used to be a molehill now becomes an absolute mountain. And every time you think of it, your feelings just explode within you and anger takes over, though it's all on the inside. I liken this, and I did a study on this years ago. I liken this to silent anger, but you're angry nonetheless. Or explosive anger. It's like a volcano. It sits there until it hits such a pressure, you just let it out. That's a spirit of unforgiveness. 
feeling distant from God. You can't get close to God. Trouble experiencing joy and happiness. It's limited. It comes for a while. Lashing out about a specific person. Their thought of that person is in your mind. Prayers seemingly go unanswered. It's like they bounce off the top of a, ceil a ceiling. You're out of alignment with God's will. You start in God's will, but you just quit. You don't go to church anymore. You don't read your Bible. You've quit on God. You're heading the opposite direction. All the result of unforgiveness, lack of blessings and favor, physical or mental torment, even to the place where you begin to imagine things that are untrue. Paranoia. I'm getting deep into the real psychic problem of unforgiveness. I've seen Christians who once were on fire for God, and through a process of time, they become paranoid about certain situations. Family divisions. We're in Christmas time. Tough to get together. Maybe by Christmas, uh, the regulations will allow us to get together. Lord willing, that'll happen. But there's some families won't get together at Christmas time because of unforgiveness in the family. I've seen people on their deathbed make things right, but too late to have an earthly relationship. I'm saying unforgiveness is dynamite. One more thing, and maybe the most powerful of all. Do you realize that unforgiveness will open the door to spiritual attack. Yes, spiritual attack. Go back to Matthew 18. Brother Mark, would you show it again? Verse 32. That's the last portion of what we read earlier in the message. <clears throat> Matthew 18, <clears throat> verse 32. Look what the Bible said. Then his Lord... After that, he called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant? By the way, did God forgive you all your sins? Then we, through the Spirit of God, ought to forgive everybody for everything. You see, you don't know how much he hurt me. You're right. I don't, and I'm not making light of it, but I want freedom for you and not pain. So the key is, have pity on thee. Verse 34, and his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. I have studied that word tormentors. That's not just torments. Not just tormented, it's tormentors. It's referring to people. It's also referring to spiritual attacks. Don't get cold on me and don't shut me off. I'm speaking the truth. So likewise, Shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses? In other words, Jesus said, if we don't have a, a forgiving heart over every problem, oh, we can't do it maybe right away, but in time, think about it and then forgive. If we don't do that, God says to you and I, not only are you going to experience all the consequences, but I'm going to have to turn you over to tormentors. Matthew chapter 6, you want to show that on the screen, Brother Mark, verse number 14. Matthew 6 and 14. Another two more scriptures that reply or respond to forgiveness. Verse 14. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Oh, that's what I want. That's what I want. Is that what you want? Do you really want that? That is to walk in joy and the fullness of it. 
So anything that happens to you and I, no matter how minor or how major, there's got to be a time we forgive. But verse 15 says, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So in other words, we'll walk in the spirit of God, but troubled, worried, fearful, difficulty. Why? Because we've not been forgiven our trespasses. That means we're paying the consequences right away as soon as we hold on to that which was done to us. One more, Ephesians chapter 4. Mark's going to show that on the screen. Trust you holding your Bible, flipping. I give you time to get there. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 14. Great scripture, two verses. Verse 20, uh, I think 14, 15 is what I had down there. Uh, do, do rather 26 and 27. Okay, talking about you and I. Be ye angry and sin not. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You ever, you ever go to bed angry? Wrong. I'm tempted to. Wrong. Don't go to bed angry. Uh, it, it, it doesn't work. You'll, you'll wake up angry. Uh, uh, anybody want to say an amen to that? Don't go to bed angry. Deal with it. How do you deal with it? Talk it out. If you, it's inside, you talk to God about it and, and let it go. Uh, and I'll teach you how to let it go in, in a little. So, verse 26, uh, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. 27, here it is. Neither give place to the devil. The devil loves angry people. You know why he loves angry people? Because he gets you to do what you normally wouldn't do, which causes you more pain, which causes you more trouble, which causes you to live more in anger, and it just keeps multiplying. It's like putting yeast in flour. I made, I made a pie crust one day. Since Meryl didn't do any baking, uh, I'm joking. Uh, I said, I, I'm going to try that. So I, I went to an old recipe book, <clears throat> how to make pie dough. Well, uh, I read the recipe. And it said, you need to put some yeast in there. Well, uh, no. Uh, but anyway, I did. Uh, and suddenly I had a mass amount of stuff lying on the counter that didn't turn out to be pastry. It was a mess. Uh, why? Because the yeast causes a turmoil on the inside. Uh, it bubbles up. Well, that's what the devil loves to do with you and I. Unforgiveness makes an angry person and just multiplies everything. Uh, so <clears throat> we've looked at the cause. We've looked at the consequences. Now let's look at the cure. And we'll spend some time here. I love this part. Uh, have you identified anything in your life that you need to take care of? Don't just hear another message and let it go. It's going to take work to forgive. It takes work and it takes time. So let me give you a few things on the cure. Number one, forgiveness does not mean forgetting. You probably will never forget what was done to you. The purpose of forgiveness is not to forget it. So if you still remember it and you say, well, I've forgiven so, but I still remember it. Yes, but there's a difference. The difference is, your memory will not be as painful as what it was. You will not want to take revenge. It'll simply be a memory of a painful past 
but it's past. Past. It's done. It no longer has the same effect on you. So when you forgive, don't think, oh, I'll never remember it again. Oh, you remember it. I, I remember. I, I, I've said this example before, but it's fresh in my mind. I was a little boy. I wanted my dad to buy me a pony. You know, every child goes through a, a process of wanting a little pony or a horse. And I remember my dad saying, uh, when, you, when you hit this button, when you're this tall, I'll buy you a pony. And I remember when I was this tall, I went to my dad and I said, I, I'm this tall now. Uh, he never did buy me a pony. Do you remember it? Absolutely. Is it painful? No. You say, that's just a pony, but you don't know what happened in my life. I'm saying it's the same process, no matter how painful. So forgetting it is one thing. Number two, forgiveness does not mean endorsement. That is, you are endorsing what that person has done to you. No, not at all. Stand against wrong, stand against sin, never change that, and never accept that what that person did was legitimate or okay. No, it was wrong. They will face the consequences of God or the courts in their life. So you're not endorsing the person that did you wrong by forgiving them. It's like this. It's like taking yourself off the hook. But they, the offender, the one that did you wrong, is still on the hook of God until they go to God. So it's not endorsement. Number three, forgiveness is a process. In some small instances, it's a quick thing. It's it's. It's quick because it wasn't a major pain, but a major pain, you may have to go through this over and over and over again until, until the pain no longer is good. It may take, now don't get upset, go through the process, but the big ones, the harsh ones may take a year. It may take a year. I've talked to people, personal experience. I'll no, use no personal examples. It took a whole year of delving into the word of God, letting the spirit of God heal. But you still have to, at one point in time, from your heart, forgive. But it's a process. Don't be frightened of it. In fact, if I could say this, enjoy each step of the process because it's free. Forgiveness is, number four, a choice. It's not a feeling. It can't be a feeling because when you're really hurting, you never feel like forgiving. You never feel it. But it's a choice. I need to and I will. So you can't wait till you get the feeling to forgive someone because the feeling will come later, not sooner. You will always be thankful at the conclusion. I am so glad I forgave and let it go. I feel better. I feel better. So it's a process. It takes time. Now, what's the process? Think about the person. Well, every time I think about him or her, it's painful. I know. Think about the person. <clears throat> think about the pain. What it was it that caused that real hurt? And I went over those right at the beginning. So think about the person. Think about the pain. In fact, write it down. And a piece of paper that you throw away later for no one else to see. It's between you and 
God. I've done this with people over the years. I send them home. I sit with them. Maybe it's in my office. And they write down the name of the person. I said, I don't want to see it. I don't need to see it. It's not between me and you. I'm just guiding and leading you in the process of going to God. So write the name down. Take a piece of paper. Write the name down. Secondly, write the offense down. What if it's more than one? Then write each of them down as the Lord reveals that to you. And by the way, he will. The Holy Spirit, through the power of God, will talk to you and I. And I'll guarantee you, I've seen it happen. They'll write down. I've seen people write down sons, uh, school teachers. And the reason you embarrassed me and so on and so on. And write the name and the event in short and brevity. And you'll know the whole statement. It'll be a paragraph or more. But you'll write down one thought about that. Are you getting it this morning? Write the name and the event or the pain. <clears throat> and then take that list, however long. However long, I remember in California, a, guy, a gal came in. I've told you before, but I got to tell you again. As she came in, uh, how she got to know me, I'm, I'm not sure. Never she came in, her husband was in jail and she had to, she was running an apartment complex and raising the children all on her own, angry at her husband. And then she said, you know what the truth is? I'm angry at everybody, everywhere I drive. Everybody's doing me wrong. I'm angry at everything. I'm angry at my tenants. Angry, angry, angry. And so I said, here's what you need to do. And she listened intently. And I said, it may take you a while. She took a scrap piece of paper, eight and a half by 11, and wrote the name down and the event, name down and the event. She came back in. Oh, it was quite some time later. I'm, I'm just trying to remember, maybe a week or two uh, and she showed me the scrap piece of paper. I don't need to see it. See it. I don't. It was full. It was absolutely full. Full. And I said, take each person. And he, see, forgiveness is a process. Clean it out. You don't wash a dish halfway. You don't put it in your cupboard till it's all clean. And you'll know when it's all clean, when God, the Holy Spirit, will cleanse you from all sin. And you will have a freedom like you maybe haven't experienced for a long. She did. And she came back in again. What was once an angry looking woman had the joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord joy of the Lord. It was like God was shining through her life. I'll conclude this illustration by saying, uh, when I left California, moved here, her and her husband showed up for uh, a closing fellowship that we had. And she made, uh, she hand sold a couple of uh, uh, animals uh, that she made. And she said, thanks for helping. I said, it all glory to God. God did it. I'm just a, I'm just a vessel. And uh, uh, she said, I, I, want, I want you to have them. Uh, the joy of the Lord. That's what I want you to have. Now, you go to God in prayer with this list and with the power of Jesus Christ, not your power, the power of Christ. See, there's things that you need such help for. Only God can help you to get it done and say, I forgive, name the person for such and such. Do so for each offense. Stay with the offense until you feel you have dealt with it. And God will tell you when you're done with that offense. This takes time and it can be very painful. As this process becomes real and authentic in your life, the pain of the memory will be replaced with a peace and a freedom. I promise that based upon the word of God. So I believe it is the key to the fulfillment 
of the joy of Jesus wants you and I to have. So I ask you this morning, as we conclude, are you struggling over something? Bitterness or anger? It may even be COVID. Maybe COVID. It may even be an election. How many people in the United States are angry over an election? Frustration with life. Unsolved conflict between you and your wife, family. Take pride, put it aside. Humble yourselves in the sight of God and deal with it. Admit to the need of forgiveness. Do so. One illustration, his name was Oscar Petrosius. Petrolius. Oscar had no uh, legs from the knee down. But he was an athlete. He ran uh, in the Paralympics, but he also wanted to run in the Olympics. Marilyn and I watched a four part series on Oscar. <clears throat> Became immensely popular around the world. Uh, in the place of prosthetics on his legs, they had constructed a system of springs that he would run on and run he could, not just because of the springs. In fact, they tested him out saying, does he have an advantage or disadvantage? The reason he won a lot of the races was attitude and training. It had really virtually nothing to do with the advantage of what he used to run with. Oscar, there he is. You see a picture of him running. <clears throat> immensely popular, loved by many. He had a girlfriend. Sad to say, they lived together. Should have been married, but he didn't. Didn't follow God's order. <clears throat> One night, middle of the night, didn't have prosthetics on. He hears a noise in the bathroom. Living in South Africa, his thought was someone has broken in to the bathroom window. He's got a gun, gets it. He sort of struggles to walk towards the bathroom. He takes the gun, aims at the door, and fires. Help me out, Marilyn. How many shots? Four shots. Bang, 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 bang. He takes a bat used by, uh, what's the game? Cricket. 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 Breaks the door down. I'm telling you a story. Breaks the door down. Finds inside his girlfriend, shot four times. Tries to revive her. A doctor comes. She's pronounced dead. Oscar shot his old girlfriend, went to trial. We saw the trial. He was first acquitted of first degree murder. He did a retrial, in fact, three trials. It concluded with that he was accused of murder and he ended up in prison. I conclude this story with this thought. One of the interviewers went to see him in prison. By the way, he was hated by many, hated by many. And here's the statement Oscar said to the interviewer. And the whole four part program ended with these thoughts. He said this, and by the way, he's in prison right today, I believe in South Africa. He said this, if only I could experience forgiveness. Some of you sitting and watching, you say, I've been forgiven by God. The things that I did, he's wiped them white as snow. And I want the fullness of joy. <clears throat> 
I've got to, and I will start forgiving every offense. That's the process. Would you do it? Would you let it go? Would you go to Almighty God? If you need help in it, if you need help through this, call me, text me, email me. We'll keep it private. We'll go through the process of forgiveness. I'll show you how to do it. You say, how do you know all this? I did it myself. And I know not only by experiencing what others have gone through, but I've gone through it myself. Let it go. I'll pray with you that God will give you the grace to have compassion for yourself. Forgive yourself as well. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you. Sure, thank you for the scriptures. Clear, wonderful, wonderful scriptures. Peter wanted to know how many times, and Jesus said, just keep forgiving for the rest of your life. <laughs> We're glad we can. I am so helpful, help, uh, happy. I am so happy for those that have done what the Word of God says to do. What a joy. What a way to live. Full of joy. Full of peace. Oh, it gets disturbed, Lord, every once in a while with events. And we'll always have to forgive. We never come to the end of that. But what a process it is to know your help, Heavenly Father. And I pray for the one that may not be saved, that today, through this broadcast, they simply look to Jesus Christ and admit they need forgiveness for their sin and a relationship with Jesus. And pray the prayer of a sinner's prayer, Lord, save my soul. I pray for those that need yet to be baptized. Yes, we'll make a time for that. I pray for those that maybe are dealing with something in their lives, that they will get alone with God and start to deal with that area of their life and experience freedom like they've never had before. Bless now this message in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Here's a couple of reminders about prayer requests. Pray for our future property. Where it is, how we get it, Don continues to.